Good afternoon, everybody. Alexander here with High Winds EDC. Today, I have another full review for you. Today, it's going to be of this awesome little guy right here, the Bridgeport Knife Company 395. Um, this thing, honestly, first and foremost, right out of the gate, is a really good knife. Really good for what you're getting, and we're going to go into detail. <clears throat> I love it. It's a really good knife. I'm not even trying to hype it up because it's a new titanium knife at all. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to be that kind of person. What I'm trying to tell you guys is I put this thing to use and it has not let me down. Um, I've got some shorts on Instagram. I've got some reels on Instagram, shorts on YouTube. I've got some videos on YouTube of me putting this guy to use, cutting open burlap bags. I've done some food prep with this thing and man, it's just, like I said, it hasn't let me down. I've sharpened it. I've used the work sharp field sharpener to sharpen it. I haven't put it against my um, uh, precision, pre precision adjust yet, but oh man, it's just, it's great. Look at, hold on. That's not the edge, that's just lint, I think. Nope. Let's see, yeah, it's dirty. It's a dirty boy right now. Cool. That's the edge right there. You can see a little bit of dirt and grime. Sorry, I'm not trying to get my face in there. But yeah, look at the pocket clip. So yeah, let's get into it in typical fashion. We're gonna go from tip to butt. Uh, we're gonna start with this awesome blade shape. Um, we're, you know, it's up in the air as to what it's called, but it's definitely a reverse tanto drop point whale belly i don't know <laughs> it's a very interesting blade shape to say the least um it is very functional it's a really good piercer it's a really good um slicer because of how thin it is behind the edge and it is also um just very functional uh, for what you're getting yeah i guess that is a little bit of a, a bump and bruise it's okay we can sharpen that right out um it is in 14c 28n which has kind of been unanimous, unanimously nominated as the best budget steel across the board by Laren Thomas. Now, you know, that's debatable. Whether you truly believe so or not, your mileage may vary when it comes to certain steels. Um, this is manufactured, by the way, I should say, by QB Knives, so it is based out of China, but um, that really helps drive the price down for such a very good knife. You do have a hole opening. This in this in this case, it's a rectangular oblong uh, method. So there you go. There's the reverse flick, and you can easily thumb roll it to deployment. You have a really good hollow grind with a very generous sharpening slash finger choil, where you can choke up. I did talk to the knife maker. Very cool dude. Very cordial. Very young. I think he designed this knife when he was only 19 years old. He may be 20 now. I need to reach out and ask. But <clears throat> it's been really nice. Um, let's see. It hasn't been spotting with rust lately, so that's really good. That actually is a bonus for me because I have been known to rust through some stainless steels. Stainless steels that would be considered like S35VN, which I know is not ultra corrosion resistant but steals like m390 from riot on a chavez 229 full-size redemption i've rusted through that because of the satin grind that they have i guess it allows for more it's it's more porous compared to other finishes and stuff like that on on a blade steel and so um this one has actually held up really well it's been in my right pocket a lot when i go long boarding with my kids uh this has been riding in the pocket as well so it, it's really good um, we're gonna go ahead and go to the pivot which I really appreciate on this side there is a uh, this is a captured pivot it's kind of got like a, uh, a a chamfer on the inside so that way it catches in place and you're not spinning freely um, it's got very minimal hardware as you can see one two three um, and this third could honestly be done away with um, but I think he was trying to be generous to left-handed people to be able to put the pocket clip on the left-hand side. Um, and then you have a T10, I believe. I can't remember. I have done a disassembly on this. Cleaned it out. And um, yeah, it's 
super easy to put back together. This one had some issues, and this is a disclosure from the actual um, knife designer, um, that there were issues with the, with the bearings in the original, so he swapped them out with skiffs. Now, I don't know, I, I don't have much experience swapping out bearings for bearings, so factory bearings for skiff bearings or taco bearings or whatever the case may be. I don't have experience in doing that, but I will say that the action is made very well. So there is that. Um, again, your mileage may vary. Um, I do love this show side. It's just ultra minimal, great for photos, and so is honestly the clip side as well. It's very photogenic, uh, I, I should say. <coughs> I should also say, before I move any further, sharpening this thing up is a breeze. Um, you do have to sharpen it uh, more frequently than you would things like S35VN, um, M4s, you know, your your high carbon steels and stuff like that, but still, um, it, it's it's made easy. You can easily just do it on a ceramic cup if you really needed to. Um, not that I've ever done that. I've never done that. I put my hand up. I've never sharpened my knife with a coffee mug. So anyways, it is a liner lock. And I think that as we move more into the future, of like knife makers and designs and stuff like that, you're gonna see a lot more shadow box liner knives because with a frame lock, as you all know, if you accidentally put counter pressure, this is a Chris Reed Knives on Limbs on, breaking that detent can be a nightmare. So you have to remove your finger from the frame and that's a very, very common issue for a lot of people who are getting into frame locks for the very first time and it could mess with your deployment. <coughs> Um, some notable shadow box liner knives, which is one of my all-time favorites, is the um, Urban Supply uh, F5.5, Urban EDC Supply F5.5, a Voxinus design, um, one of my all-time favorites, and it does those shadow box liners very well. And he even said the F5.5 is one of his favorite knives. And so, you know, you can draw the assumption that maybe he was inspired to do that because it's so nice. Like, well, I don't know why you wouldn't at this point. The detent is not strong, but it's not light. So it just comes flying out. There you go. Um, and then you do have the titanium handles. The titanium is very good on this. Um, this one was actually bronzed by the man himself. He took it as a project to, to try out bronzing, <coughs> putting bronze anodization on his knives with, uh, you can hardly tell now because it's a little worn in, but with purple hardware, with a purple ANO hardware, which is awesome. I don't, I, I love that. Um, and especially with the bronze, man. Bronze just goes so hard in the paint for me on titanium. Um, it wears differently and, and stuff of that nature. You do have skeletonized liners. You can see in that side. Hold on, let's see. There you go. This side has the skeletonized liners, and this side just has the um, liner lock, so that helps reduce weight a little, but this thing essentially is almost weightless, uh, comparable to, you know, a little heavier than a bug out, but not as heavy as like a Chris Reeve Knives on Mims on that I just showed you. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love this knife. Um, the blade shape is probably my favorite, besides it being a shadow box liner lock. Um, the blade shape is just my absolute favorite. The ergonomics are really nice. I have small hands, and so this is what it looks like. It's very comfortable in a reverse grip where you're cutting rope or something like that. And yeah, it's just, it's just awesome, honestly. The clip is also another huge plus. It is a um, 3D milled titanium clip that is reversible. So there you go, lefties. Um, and it just got it has really nice retention and you're not gonna you're not gonna bend it unless you're absolutely trying to and it sits nice and it doesn't move even though there's only one screw and it's because as you can see on the other side it takes a, cir a circular a square shape and it nests right in there and yeah it's not a deep pocket carry but I don't think you need a deep pocket carry clip especially if you're you know working in the field now, if you're working in an office, that may be something else, but this knife is not a, um, an issue. The action, like I said, you know, you can do the spidey drop, you can do the reverse flick, you can do a, uh, I guess, a reverse flick with your ring finger, you can do, uh, 
a reverse pinky flick, like, oops, I guess you can't, I guess I can't. So there it is. So yeah, really good knife. Let's get into some size comparisons. <coughs> the most notable size comparison that I can offer to you guys is the Oz Machine Company Roosevelt, which is a frame lock. And he said he was inspired by these types of knives. Um, so almost virtually identical. Sorry, I'm trying to go pivot to pivot. So yeah, really good size knife. Um, does take a lot of cues from the Roosevelt and a bunch of others. And so that just really goes to show the design language of this young man, um, Garrett, his name is, that he just really knows what he's doing. He's got a sharp eye for the things that he likes and it translates very well into this knife, the 395, really cool. Um, we'll get into, what does it compare next to a Demco 8020.5? which is one of my all-time favorite knives in the world. It's small, small compared to it. As you can see, um, it's got a smaller blade shape and smaller handle profile. Um, so there is that if you've handled a Demco 8020.5. Uh, we'll compare it next to a, a Custom, which is my Pena Apache. Oh, I can't do it. Uh, slightly larger than the Pena Apache, but not by much. Um, the the Pena Apache is a reverse Tonto sheep's foot style blade. So yeah, um, I will say that it is thick in this dimension, but not noticeable. I think it's because of the skeletonization and the use of titanium being a lighter material, you're able to really um, uh, not feel heavy, but it is solid. You know what I mean? It's like. I don't know. I can't really find the words. It's solid, but it's also lightweight. It's not going to go anywhere. Let's compare it to another Pena, but this is going to be a production series, the Pena Knives Mula. So there. Pena Knives Mula is also in a like a, a sheep's foot style blade. So there you go. Let's see. Are there anything... I did talk about disassembly. That was pretty relatively easy to do. It's it's, it's super easy to clean and everything like that. Um, and then the final size comparison we'll do up against the. Oh, we'll do a couple more size comparisons. Here's the um, Boker AK One by Alex Kremer. So very similar profiles. So if you've handled this knife, you you know you you have an idea. Let's see, and then we'll do some everyday objects, like a Sharpie, or in this case, the Milwaukee Marksall, Inksall. So, there's that. Uh, let's do it up against a Raylight Pineapple Mini, so you guys can see. So yeah, a really good knife. Um, so let's talk about some of the things that, um, I, don't know, I guess the drawbacks on this knife. The biggest drawback is going to be its availability, guys. Um, they're not readily available. I think there's only been two drops so far, and they've been very small quantity drops. And now I get to tell you guys that there will be another drop coming in April. So follow him on Instagram. Um, he's been keeping everybody updated and, and, and posted and stuff about when drops could potentially be. He's trying out a new website, like uh, not a new website necessarily, but a new um what did he say, payment processing uh, company or something like that. So yeah, he'll, he's trying to get all that stuff ironed out. But yeah, so availability, lack of availability. Other than that, there are really no other drawbacks except for, and this is a personal desire, this is going outside and just kind of putting my own personal thoughts into this. What would really be good on a knife like this is probably uh, a better blade steel. I'm not a knife steel snob, but I did have to sharpen this guy, touch it up. I'm still gonna have to touch it up. As you can see, I kind of, the, the bevel is a little, uh, I guess you would say marred up a little bit, but not too bad, it still cuts. Uh, <clears throat> a knife steel like S35VN, which is one of my personal favorites, or S45VN, I think that would be a really good option for a knife like this but then you would see a major price increase. I don't know what the actual translations are. I've never designed a knife. I've never talked to a knife designer, maker, or production OEM type, never done it. But 
to see a steel like S45VN. Of course, the dream would always be magnet cut or even 3V. I like 3V um, as a steel, but or maybe even 154CM on a knife like this. Just uh, something with a little bit more edge retention um, without sacrificing too much toughness or um, corrosion resistance. So yeah, that's those are my final thoughts on this particular knife. Um, it, oh yeah, it does have uh, barrel spacers, by the way. Anyways, Mr. Garrett, I hope you in, I, I, I hope, oh, full disclaimer, sorry, I probably should have put this at the very beginning. This knife was not purchased by me. This knife was sent along by Garrett himself. Um, he said he liked my, the quality of my videos, not even the quality, but he just liked what I was doing. And so um, he sent this along for free. So this is a free knife, full disclaimer. Like I said, I probably should have put that at the very, very beginning, but I'm putting it here now. Hopefully you guys make it to the end of this video. Um, and uh, I will say that the price range is also really good. Um, in the $120 price range, $110, $120 price range, um, plus taxes and shipping and stuff like that, you're still getting a lot of bang for your buck on this awesome knife. Because, I mean, you could easily go look at some Kaisers or, or Civivis or something like that, and you can pay upwards of like $120 for Micarta. Um, style knives and you're not going to get something that's this beautiful uh, as far as deployment, blade shape, ergonomic uh, dream. It's an ergonomic dream. I did say it's got some um, chamfering here as well on a previous video so I'll mention it here as well. And so it, it's just nice and rounded over. It's not sharp. You're not getting any sharp points. The jimping is almost perfect for where it needs to be. Sorry. The jimping is almost perfect for what it is, what it needs to be. Um, not hard at all and um, it's easy to deploy it's easy to deploy well while wearing gloves so that's another good thing um, so I gave you guys a full disclaimer that this was sent to me for free and uh, I didn't have to pay anything um, so we do have to assume that this is to take from Nick Chabaz one of the one of the more better quality um, knives that uh, they have produced <coughs> And I tried not to let that affect the nature of my review. It was a blessing to be able to receive this in the mail, but um, and then to get to try it out and to review it, but yeah, it's a really good knife. Um, <clears throat> outside of that, I think I've hit all of the points that I'd like to talk about. I gave you guys some uh, size comparisons and stuff like that. So yeah, also one other thing is it's really cool because it fits very well in my Paradrop leather triari Like that it, it makes it a little thicker in in the in the waist that is but Okay, um, if you guys have any questions feel free to comment like this video if you did enjoy it and um, Be sure to subscribe and maybe try to hit that little notification bell um, you know, we're trying things out. Uh, this is a I, I do this all on my own time, and yeah, <laughs> guys, I really enjoy doing this. Um, let me know what you guys think of the Bridgeport Knife Company 395. Thanks, bye.